Look, I don't know what it is you want to call these things. Werewolves, dogmen, dog soldiers. I don't know. But these things are flat out violent and very dangerous. Let me tell you my story that nearly cost me my life. For this story, we have to go back to wintertime of 2009, somewhere around February or March. We had passed the worst part of winter, but it was still very wet and very cold. This night, I was driving home and was driving down a steep mountainside filled with trees and forest all around me. The roads were very curvy, and although it was above freezing, you still had to be careful. Things were very wet. As I'm making my way down to the base of the grade, there is a sharp turn. As I'm doing this, I noticed off to my left, there was some sort of, at the time, large animal trailing me through the woods. I got ready to slam on my brakes, thinking a large buck was about to emerge through the woods and run across the road. But as I slowed down, that didn't happen. In fact, whatever this was following me also stopped too. That's when I got a little unnerved, and I began driving. Then, this thing quickly followed suit, staying within the tree line, but also keeping up with my vehicle at about 30 to 35 miles an hour, which, for a deer, if that was the case, isn't a hard feat. This goes on for maybe a mile or two, and now I'm beginning to feel uncomfortable about the situation. No animal of that size that I can see from the shadows follows a vehicle like this. This almost felt predatory in nature. Hear me out. My gut instinct was screaming at me to go faster. Already, I knew this wasn't a bear. This wasn't a wolf. And I know cougars or mountain lions don't get this big. Something was following me. And whatever it was, I don't know. So I began to speed up to about 40, 45. On the part of the road I was at, since I had passed down the grade, it was now straight, beginning to curve slightly to the right. And as I got to the curve, this horrendous-looking thing burst through the woods and charged at the backside of my small little Nissan truck. This thing shot with incredible speed and latched itself onto my back rear tire. The sheer force of the impact of it latching onto my back left tire was so strong, it sent my vehicle swerving, and as this happened, it tore the back left tire completely off the axle, along with the rubber and the frame, and God knows what happened. In this motion, the entire truck flipped several times and landed on the side of the road, all while I remained in the truck. Of course, the accident and impact left me unconscious, with a severe concussion and several scratches and bruises. But thanks to my seatbelt, I did not end up being projected to the windshield, being smashed by my truck. The next thing I remember, police are pulling me out of the vehicle, and I remember having a light shown in my face, probably checking for vitals. And then I lost consciousness again. Then I woke up again in the hospital, and I had a doctor come in, maybe 15-20 minutes after I regained consciousness, to tell me briefly what happened. Apparently there was an accident. And, luckily, some passerby drove by, saw that I was unresponsive, called 911, and you probably know the story from here. This all took place over the course of several hours. Luckily, even though I had a concussion and scratches and bruises, I'm okay, and nothing long-term or severe happened to me. When they had asked what happened, I immediately recounted seeing this horrible thing out of my side mirror charging towards my vehicle. Before I even spoke, I knew if I told them what I really saw, they would probably immediately attribute it to me not being sober. I've never done a lick of drugs in my life. Sure, I'm drinking now and then, but I'm not really much of a drinker. In fact, I much preserve the life of sobriety more than anything else. So, I bit my tongue, waited a few seconds, and then told them I saw a large bear charge after my vehicle. The doctor's eyes became wide. And he asked me, Are you sure a bear can tear the tire off a car like that? What did you do to provoke it? I just looked at him and shrugged my shoulders. I did speak to the police briefly as well, giving them a very similar story. I couldn't afford to tell them the truth. 
I knew I wouldn't be taken seriously if I did. They probably would have either discredited me, attributed it all to drugs or alcohol, or threw me in the loony bin. None of the three I really wanted. Luckily, I was able to get a new truck soon afterwards, since the truck was completely totaled. But forget about those irrelevant details. I know what you're wanting to hear about. The thing that attacked me and my truck. To be honest with you, I have no idea what animal it was. I've never seen or heard of anything that looked like it. It did resemble a werewolf. I'll be honest with you. But I don't know what you want to call it. I've heard people refer to it as a dogman. And I know the concept of a werewolf is somebody transforming under a full moon. I don't even know if that's the case. But this thing was definitely an upright, walking wolf-looking creature. Long, black hair, tall, pointy ears, striking yellow eyes, and a very large head, full of crocodilian-like teeth, protruding out of its lower and upper jaw. This thing had the strength of a lion, as it pounced with incredible speed, and as soon as it latched onto my back tire, just the sheer inertia set my vehicle tumbling, and in that one fluid motion tore the tire right off the back of the axle, and that's when I had the accident. It all happened so fast that it might be hard to recount the exact details, but I don't know what it did afterwards. I don't know where it went to, and I don't understand why it pointed out my truck and attacked it when it did. After I crashed, I guess I was technically just a hanging piece of meat that it could have easily gotten to, had it shown the power already to clearly tear the tire off an axle. Why didn't it come after me? I don't know. And who knows how long I was really sitting there, hanging upside down, until the passerby found me. The road I was traveling down isn't well traveled, and it could have been easily 30 plus minutes before somebody even drove by and saw me. Makes me shudder to still think about. I don't know how this winter has been for you, in whatever state you're living in, but over here, in western Pennsylvania, it's been pretty crazy. Crazier than usual, which is saying a lot, considering we're a state that gets hit with tons of snow every year. I think somewhere of around 100 inches or so every year. Like I said, it's a lot of snow. You better get used to it if you're living out here. Another thing we have a lot here in Pennsylvania is wildlife, which brings me to the reason why I'm writing you. I found tracks outside my barn this morning. Tracks I don't quite understand. They're clearly made from a canine, but a no canine I know gets this big. I'll have to upload the pictures and send them to you via email. But I didn't want to waste your time, so I thought I'd reach out to you first, get confirmation that it's okay, and send them over. They're pretty large in size, easily 12 inches if not bigger. We're talking huge canine tracks. Whatever made this had to have easily been the size of a grizzly bear, if not bigger. I know that doesn't even sound possible, but I cannot think for the life of me what dog breed can make these. The other thing that really bothers me is the track pattern is not quadrupedal, meaning it isn't from a four-legged animal, judging by the way the stride is. It appears to be more bipedal. You can clearly see the stride pattern, it's like somebody was walking on two legs, walking around. And the other weird thing, wearing fake werewolf canid boots. The impression in the snow is quite deep, meaning that whatever made these tracks not only had tremendous stride, but must have weighed a considerable amount. I'm around 270 pounds, a bigger guy, if you will, and I'm six foot two. Even me, with all my snow gear on and my boots, can't even make half the indent as these do. So something is out there doing this. I know of dogmen, and I've heard their legends all around the entire Great Lakes area, from Wisconsin to Michigan, and even all over western Pennsylvania. I've never seen one myself, but I've heard many stories from friends and family growing up. I never really wanted to believe they existed, but now, I guess I have no choice but to second guess. The footprints actually come out of a small section of woods that back up to acres and acres of national forest. This small section of woods kind of tails out, down to around where my house is, 
and where the neighborhood is. I would say from my barn to the small section of woods or tree line is maybe 100 yards, but I haven't actually measured. The tracks lead all the way from the tree line to my barn and then just seem to disappear. There's no traces of which direction it went, and I don't think it jumped on my roof, considering my barn is roughly 20 plus feet high. So I'm not really sure what to make of this. The tracks just literally disappear right as they go up against my barn, and it's the back side of the barn, where there's no window, there's no door. I currently do not have any live animals, just old hay and old barn supplies, so I'm not sure if there was anything remotely interesting for whatever animal making this to get into. I don't know. I have far more questions than answers, and I'm hoping, with your aid, you can help me answer many of them. Thanks for your time. My grandfather, who rest his soul, is now passed, used to work as a police officer and eventually a sheriff for well over 30 years of his life. One of the most horrifying stories he ever told me about was when he had gotten a call from a fellow. By the way, this was in the late 70s, early 80s, which year I don't exactly know. Anyway, they got a call from a fellow on a small farm nearby having complaints about some unknown animal attacking and killing all the cattle. Upon arriving there, he said he was nearly attacked and killed by what he describes as a large upright dog that hid itself amongst the trees and would jump down at his car, nearly tearing the engine out of his vehicle and nearly taking my grandfather's life had he not shot it in his eye and blown it out. At least that's what he told me. He always had a really hard time retelling the story. He would shake really bad, and you could tell it really stirred him up. In fact, he didn't even like talking about it, and the only time he ever did is when I kept asking him to retell the story. I probably had him retell it to me at least four times, and guess what? The details never changed. His reaction was always the same. I think he suffered from mild PTSD from it, said he had never seen an animal like it, but after that, that farm had continuous calls about similar situations, livestock going missing, cattle appearing dead and mutilated. He would never respond to the calls or have somebody else go and take care of it, not after that. He also had a very hard time explaining that what happened to his car. He said that a bear or something larger than a bear attacked him, but as you would know, Saying that kind of thing around town, especially in the small town my grandfather grew up in and policed in, didn't take him very far. In fact, he was often mocked, made fun of, and even risked his career at several points. I wish I could give you more details on what happened, but he never really did go into vivid detail of what the creature looked like, other than it was very tall, large, pitch black, and hid up in the trees. I do remember him using the term panther, like it very much so acted like a black panther and its movements and how agile it was, but said it clearly looked like a very large dog. Same color though, pitch black, had massive claws, and said he can never forget about how striking its red amber eyes looked. Anyway, I know it's not too much of a story, but I feel like I would chip in my family's creepy dogman story because I feel like it's pretty relevant, especially with how popular Dogman is. Plus, after that, we have no idea what happened. My grandfather eventually retired, about 16 years or so after the incident, so the mid to late 90s. He never dealt with anything like that again, never really talked about it, and then he passed away sometime after. So, unfortunately, he's not alive now to get more information out of him. As far as that farm, well, it's only about 25-30 minutes away from my house currently. Do I have any plans to go around it and visit it? No. But, here's another thing. I guess that farm is very close to a national forest. How creepy is that? <laughs>